Howdy folks, and welcome to another episode of Mingles with Jingles. This week I did something that I haven't done in a long time. Have you ever tried to Google yourself? Normally when you Google yourself, you don't come up with a, a lot that's particularly interesting. You just find a lot of other people slightly more famous than you who happen to have the same name. That doesn't happen when I do it. And it's been a while since I did it, so right before doing this episode of Mingles with Jingles, I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll give it another go and see what comes up. The first returns you get are, of course, the usual suspects. My own YouTube page, my own Facebook page, Twitter account, my own Twitch channel. But then you start getting the interesting stuff. This one was actually quite new to me. Apparently now I have an Urban Dictionary entry. And I absolutely love my Urban Dictionary definition. You ready? Here it is. The Mighty Jingles. A guy from the UK who's 40-something years old. He sits on his ass all day making YouTube videos on mostly World of Tanks and World of Warships. That's it. <laughs> and say what you like about it, but it's accurate. There's another hit that appears quite close to the top of the list whenever I Google The Mighty Jingles, and it's one that I've seen before, but I've never talked about it. But it's still there, for some bizarre reason, it still seems to be quite popular. It's actually a forum post made on the EU forums. And it's been there for a while now. Let's have a look. Yep, 31st of January 2014. It only has two pages of responses, but the responses are comedy gold. I'll read you the original post first. This is from Son of Nobby, posted on the 31st of January 2014 on the World of Tanks EU forums. The post is entitled... I used to be a big fan of the Mighty Jingles, until this happened. I was bored one day and had nothing to do, so I decided to try and platoon up with a friend. Unfortunately, there was nobody online besides one, the Mighty Jingles. First, I should... this is me, by the way, not son of Nobby. Um, I should make it absolutely clear that I have very, very few people on my friends list in both World of Tanks and World of Warships, and I promise you, son of Nobby is not one of them. Back to the post. I looked at his name on my contact list and thought, no, shall I really? Nah, as if he would even talk to me, a noob with bad stats. Well, I'm a noob with bad stats, so I don't see why that should hold you back. Well, yeah, I asked him nicely, saying that I knew he might be too busy making videos to platoon, but he just closed down my chat window. Okay, at this point, I have to admit, that is something that I do. I get a lot of chat windows, and I don't always have the time to politely explain to everybody why it is that... I can't actually respond to them because I'm in the middle of making a video. Uh, which keeps getting interrupted every time a chat window pops up. But anyway. Where were we? Oh yes. I created another chat window and said sorry to bother you, but then these words appeared. Fuck off. I'm pretty sure I would have remembered doing something like that. Um, but anyway, we'll take his word for it. Apparently I just told him to fuck off. And that's when it hit me. I thought he cared about his fans, but no, only himself and Quickie Baby. And I don't know why, but I started to cry. He was a proper celebrity to me. I was his biggest fan. I have t-shirts and mugs and stuff. Now I don't know what to do. Now the purpose of me bringing this up and mingles with jingles isn't to defend myself against the claim that I was as rude as that to somebody who just wanted to talk to me um, in a private message in World of Tanks. I certainly can't remember being as deliberately rude as that to somebody. Um, I know I shut chat windows down, but I tend to go out of my way to at least be polite whenever I am talking to anybody. Most of the time it's just easier not to talk to people. But that's not the issue. The reason I brought this up was because of the responses posted in this forum thread, which are an absolute goldmine of comedy. I'll pick just a few of them at random. Ecotech said, now you don't know what to do, well as harsh as this may seem, now you have the unique opportunity to get a life. Hending said, this reminds me of the song Stan by Eminem. My particular favourite was posted by German Dunk on the 1st of February 2014 in response to the original post. And he said, every time Jingle spams me in chat asking how he should play the Centurion 7 or something, I tell him where to go in similar fashion. And those Kazna recruiters... My god, but they're persistent. Join our clan, please. We give you 5,000 gold. I'll tell you something else. If I ever find out who gave Cameron Diaz my number, I'll bloody punch them. 3am this morning, she was texting me. Again, I don't care if she's gagging for it. A man needs his sleep. 
<laughs> Special mention to Incompetence, who in the very next reply posted, I suggest you bring out your pillow with Jingle's face printed on it and hug it tightly. It'll help make the pain go away. <laughs> Oh, forum trolls. I absolutely love them. Why can't I get this quality of troll on YouTube? Why do you have to go to the official forums to get this level of, of well, art? <laughs> when it comes to trolling, I mean... <laughs> the kind of troll comments that I get on YouTube in my videos, they're pretty... They're pretty basic and simple. It's usually somebody who just jingles your shit. Jingles, get a life. Jingles, you're a noob. No, I'm a noob, really. <laughs> what gave that away? Was it the bit in the channel description that says noob gamer extraordinaire? Or did you just figure that one out for yourself? I genuinely feel like the trolls on YouTube are just not trying hard enough. If you want a higher quality of trolling, you really have to go to the official forums, and these guys certainly didn't disappoint. So, yeah. Challenge. YouTube trolls. Try harder. You really need to up your game. If you need any kind of inspiration, just go and spend ten minutes on the World of Tanks official forums. Anyway, what's next? Oh, yeah. Apparently now I've also got my own TV tropes page. This is quite new. Well, it might not actually be new, but it's the first time I've become aware of it. Um, some of the memes associated with me are like this one. This one will come as no surprise to anybody who's ever seen me play War Thunder. Captain Crash. As enthusiastic as he is about flying planes in games like War Thunder, he's a little less gifted in the area of bringing them back down safely. <laughs> he's so notorious for it that the community has taken to calling any particularly hard landing that loosens rivets, stitches and dental fillings a jingles landing. In one particularly memorable instance, he managed to crash land a submarine on the ocean floor <laughs> while playing cold waters. I'm never going to be allowed to forget that one, am I? Here's one I didn't expect to see. Uh, this is a trope attributed to me called Took a Level in Badass. For all his self-deprecation and occasional mistakes, Jingles is pretty good at World of Warships. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm alright. Uh, especially in Destroyers, his own battleship game replays feature him regularly able to back up his right to call out other battleship captains for being big, stupid, fat battleship drivers who sail in straight lines and eat full salvos of torpedoes. As demonstrated here, and there's a link, in the first half of this video with him using the tier 2 Japanese battleship Mikasa. I remember that video. Yes. I'll put a link down below in the video description for anybody who hasn't seen it and wonders what I'm talking about and what TV Tropes is referring to, but I, I actually do remember doing that video. Uh, I went back and watched the link again and it's actually pretty funny. Um, the tier 2 Japanese battleship, the Mikasa, the guns are absolutely terrible. Uh, but it's got lots and lots and lots of secondaries, so I went just for a laugh and uh, specialised in secondaries on that ship. I mean, there's a limit to the amount of specialisation you can actually do. It's only Tier 2. There are a very, very limited number of modules you can fit to it. Um, but I did what I could, and I specifically went out looking for enemy destroyers. <laughs> Not so I could shoot at them with the main guns on the Mikasa, which are absolutely terrible, and if you hit anything with them, it's more a matter of luck than judgment, especially with my aim. But um, yeah, it was it was a very very funny game. I ended up dodging torpedoes at ranges of seven kilometers or less from one cruiser and three destroyers, and I think I dodged thirty four in total, <laughs> and uh, only got hit and eventually sunk by two of them. In fact, most of the damage that I took in that battle was actually from the guns of the cruiser, rather than the, at one point. I can remember that one of the destroyers that was fruitlessly trying to torpedo me got bored and sick and tired of firing torpedoes at me and went to look for easier targets like other destroyers. <laughs> I'll put a link down below in the video description. Um, but yeah, I, I'd completely forgotten about that game, but it's actually linked in t my, uh, my brand new, never knew it existed TV tropes. Uh, web page. So 
that, that was fun, I have to admit. It, it's always, you know, you always take a bit of a chance whenever you Google yourself, because everything that you find might not necessarily be things that you want to see. For example, another one of the uh, hits that I found when I went back and Googled myself uh, this weekend was to a topic on the World of Warplanes forums. And it's not what you're expecting. I know that I have a bit of a history with World of Warplanes, and I know that I've said lots of very, very bad things about it, and seriously upset the very small World of Warplanes community. But this is actually World of Warplanes 2.0. World of Warplanes rebadged. They went back and basically did the game again from scratch and relaunched it. And I had another look, and I actually quite liked it. I thought, well, it's certainly not great, but it's fun. And it works, and it seems to be reasonably well optimised. So, well done for making World of Warplanes playable. Well, that seems to have really upset the World of Warplanes community. <laughs> no, really, I'm not making this up, right? There's, a, I think, a two-page thread on the World of Warplanes official forums uh, linking my new World of Warplanes 2.0 You Know What? It's Actually Not Bad video where I, I, I just get savaged, absolutely ripped apart uh, by the World of Warplanes community for having the balls to actually like their game. Because apparently they don't like it now. <laughs> now that it's actually playable and fun, they don't like it anymore. So they hated me when I said their game was shit. <laughs> and now that I actually like their game, they hate me even more. You know, I think they just hate me. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> I don't think it's what I'm saying or how I'm saying it at this point. I, I think it's the messenger rather than the message. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, yeah. Google yourself. Something to do when you get bored. You'd be amazed at the results. Yeah. I have to confess, I'm actually quite sleepy at the moment. Yes, yes, we'll call it sleepy. Sleepy is the right word. What are you talking about, Jingles? Well, let me explain. Right before doing this episode of Mingles with Jingles, I cooked dinner. Why does dinner make you sleepy, Jingles? Hold on, hold on. I'll get to it. So, for dinner, I took a couple of salmon steaks, um, lightly oiled them and wrapped them in tin foil, tossed them in the oven to bake for 40 minutes, and then to go with it, I did some pasta, uh, some green beans, some baby corn, some m and beans, and then I covered it all in a four cheese sauce so lovely but you need something to drink to go along with that while sitting down eating your dinner in front of an episode of Boston Legal on Amazon Video and so I cracked open a bottle of wine and wine makes me sleepy sleepy jingles really you're saying you're drunk aren't you <laughs> no 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 I'm I'm sleepy I have a full stomach and I've had a couple of glasses of wine. I'm also now on my third cup of coffee. <laughs> After eating dinner and drinking two glasses of wine, uh, so I can get this episode of Mingles with Jingles done. Because I like nothing more than after having a good dinner and a couple of glasses of wine than getting my big fat head down and going to sleep. But I must be disciplined because I have work to do. I have all my little minions to keep happy. Otherwise they won't go to work in the salt mines for me, and that will make me a very, very unhappy Jingles. Because I am an evil gnome overlord, and I'll have to have them all executed, and then I'll have to go out and find new minions. And I'm also a very lazy gnome overlord, and that sounds far too much like hard work. So, I have to crack on with this episode of Mingles with Jingles and stop making excuses. So what are we going to talk about next? I knew there was something I wanted to talk about, I just can't remember what it was. Oh yes, that was it. In last week's episode of Mingles with Jingles, one of the topics that we covered was the issue of content ID claims and music copyright on YouTube. And if there's one person on YouTube who really knows what they're talking about when it comes to defending intellectual property rights, it's Jim Sterling. Now, many of you have probably already seen Jim Sterling's videos. Uh, for those of you who haven't, he can be a bit of an acquired taste. His personality and style are definitely not going to be to everybody's tastes, but I'm a subscriber. I think he's fantastic. Uh, I think he's an amazing showman, um, and also has very, very good points that he puts across in a very amusing and creative way. He is no stranger to getting screwed over by content ID claims on YouTube, 
from music publishers and games developers. And he has come up with a, frankly, genius method of screwing them right back. Now this is actually quite old news, it's almost two years old, but it was the first time I'd heard of it. And it was from an article on Kotaku.com entitled Game Critic Uses Brilliant Workaround for YouTube's Copyright Bullshit. And this is what Jim Sterling did. Jim does a regular series called The Jimquisition where he basically reviews games. And in one episode of The Jimquisition, he ripped apart the Nintendo Wii U game Star Fox Zero. But what set this particular video apart was the revelation that he uh, revealed to his audience right at the end of the video, who may have been wondering why, when they're watching an episode of the Jimquisition that was supposed to be about a Star Fox game, he had scattered game footage from Metal Gear Solid V, Grand Theft Auto V, and Beyond Two Souls in it as well. And he did it for a very, very clever reason. And to quote the man himself, the reason was Nintendo because I'm talking about a Nintendo game this week. I've used Nintendo game footage, and that means Nintendo will attempt to monetize this video even though the point of the Jimquisition is that it's advert-free, thanks to his supporters' help on Patreon. So he hatched a plan. He went back through his older videos and took note of what footage had gotten slammed with content ID claims in the past. He then went ahead and copied that very same flagged footage and stuck it into his new video. And he did this purely to screw with the content ID system. Again, to quote the man himself, I figured every time I talk about Nintendo I'm going to throw in other stuff that gets flagged by content ID and just watch the corporations battle it out. He hoped that by pulling this stunt he could stop any company from monetizing the video at all, since it wouldn't be clear who really owned the footage in the first place. Now, those of us who've been brought up on a YouTube diet of World of Tanks, World of Warships, War Thunder, Cold Waters, Heliborn, you know, the kind of games that I like to cover, might not actually understand what the point of this is, because, well, why would a, why would a games developer or publisher not want people to play their game, record the footage and put it up on YouTube? I mean, isn't that free advertising? Isn't that going to be good for their game? I mean, I, I, I don't get it. And, well, you'd be quite right to not get it. Unfortunately, companies like Nintendo, for example, don't want anybody putting gameplay footage of their games on YouTube and monetizing it. So what Jim has done here... <laughs> uh, and remember, his Jimquisition series is advert-free. It's paid for entirely by his supporters on Patreon, just like Mingles with Jingles. And since he's not intending to monetize the video in the first place, what he's doing, purely to screw around with companies like Warner Music Group and Take-Two Interactive, for example, <laughs> is he's taking footage from Grand Theft Auto V, which gets content ID'd by Take-Two Interactive and Rockstar Games, and he's overlaying music from bands like Erasure, which gets content ID'd and claimed by Warner Music Group, and they immediately attempt to monetize the video. But they can't. <laughs> because Nintendo have already content ID'd the game and set the monetization status to not monetized. <laughs> Which is exactly the way he intended the video to be in the first place. Thank God for Jim Sterling, seriously. The man is an utter genius. Anyway, um, link down below to Jim Sterling's channel, just in case you haven't seen it. And I appreciate that his, his presentation style is a little over the top, and may not be to everybody's taste, but if you can put up with it, the man is an absolute gold mine and a national treasure. Anyway, that's almost it for this week's episode of Mingles with Jingles, but the one thing that I did want to do at the end was to do a sort of combination shout-out and make an announcement. Um... Today I had a very, very enjoyable time playing World of Warships Divisioned Up with some of the guys from Philo, the first in, last out clan. Um, they started off in World of Tanks, uh, they always turn up for Tank Fest, they also have a presence in World of Warships. Rita Game is a member of their clan, and Quickie Baby used to be a member of their clan as well. Well, anyway, the Philo guys invited me to a World of Warships Division and we played Operations all day. But I had a lot of fun playing with the Philo guys, and earned an arse ton of free XP doing it as well, so much so that I was able to get my first Tier 10 ship in World of Warships, the American Tier 10 cruiser, the Des Moines. But it turns out they do these divisions every weekend on a Sunday, and um, 
I have an open invitation to come back and play with them on Sunday afternoons if I want to. And I had so much fun doing it that I thought, you know what, what the hell, let's make it a regular thing. Now, I didn't stream it, but one of the Philo guys did. His name was TC Freer. He's a really nice guy. He's got a very small YouTube channel, and I thought, you know what, screw it. It's not like I need the subscribers, so here's the announcement. And also the shout-out to TC Freer from Philo, who was kind enough to invite me uh, to Division with his clan and play World of Warships all afternoon. I'm definitely going to be making the effort to do this every Sunday with Philo, because I did have a lot of fun doing it, but I'm not going to be streaming it myself on Twitch. TC Freer streams these games on Twitch, and so if you want to hear and see me playing World of Warships with Philo for hours and hours and hours on a Sunday afternoon when you're digesting your Sunday dinner, then pop along to TC Freer's channel, follow him if you want to. If you like what you see, then by all means, feel free to give him a sub. Um, like I said, I don't really need the subs, and I'm sure he would appreciate them. But it's a way for me to help a smaller channel, as well as give you guys a bit of access to a bit more of me indirectly live streaming as a guest of TC Freer in Philo World Warships divisions on Sundays. So I hope to see you next week on TC Freer's Twitch channel where I'll be playing World of Warships. I do keep an eye on his Twitch channel on my second monitor so I can keep an eye on chat and see if anybody wants to, you know, say anything to me while we're there. Uh, like I said, it's not really me streaming, but it's the next best thing. And that's pretty much it for this week's episode of Mingles with Jingles. I am feeling very, very sleepy. <laughs> So I think I'm going to go and sleep this off. That was a very, very nice dinner. Uh, I hope you guys all had a great weekend. And of course, as always, take care. Thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon, ensuring that Mingles with Jingles is ad-free. And as always, I'll catch you next time.